before we get started, I just wanted to show you the finished material in the viewport. As you can see here, we have a little bit of bump and imperfections going on, and I just wanted to show you that, and you can obviously play with those with this value node here, and the strength of the bump, and you can play with the colors really easily. So everything's really accessible, and I just wanted to show you that before we get started, so let's get into it. So to get started, just set up your scene. I've got a sphere in the center with the camera pointed at it. Then in the shading tab, I got a 3D viewport and my shader editor. And for the lighting, I'm just using the built-in uh, 3D lighting for the forest one that Blender already has. So anyways, we're going to hit new material and type in printer paper, like so. And to start out, we're going to go for the bump. And so we're going to hit shift A, search for a Voronoi texture like this. Then we're going to go to edit preferences and make sure we have the Node Ranger add-on checked right here. Then with this selected, we'll press Control and T, and then move the object from the texture coordinate into the mapping right here. Then on the Voronoi, we're gonna change from F1 to distance to edge. Then we're gonna go ahead and up the scale to a 150, just like this. Then we're going to hit sh uh, Control, Shift, and left click on the Voronoi texture like this to preview what we have here. Then we're gonna Shift A and search for a map range to further adjust this node. Not a UV map, but just a map range like this. Then on this guy, we're simply going to make there be less contrast. So we're going to take this bottom value and change it to a 0.1 like this. Then we're going to have two levels of detail on this bump. So we're going to select the Voronoi and the map range and press Control Shift and D like this, which duplicates everything. Then we're simply going to take this scale down here and move it to a 100. And what that does is it just gives us two different sizes of Voronoi in the mesh. Now, all that's left to do is blend these together for this. So we'll hit Shift A and search for a noise texture. Right here, we'll take this vector and move it into the vector right there. I'm going to grab this, move it up, hold Shift and right click over these three right here, which gives us this one node right here to keep everything clean. Then I'll Control Shift left click to preview the noise texture. And on this guy, I'm going to switch the scale all the way up to a 50 and the detail to an 8, like this. We'll hit Shift A, search for another map range node like so. And we're gonna up the contrast on this guy again. So we're gonna move this guy right here to a 0.4 on the front min, and then from the front max, we'll move to a 0.6. And this is going to be the mask for our Voronoi textures. Next, we'll hit Shift A, search for a mix RGB like so. Take the result of the noise texture map range into the factor. Then we're going to take the results from these map ranges into color one and color two like this. And then if we preview this with Control shift left click we can see that it starts to blend them together. Then we're just going to check clamp on this just to make sure that we stay between values of 0 and 1. Then we'll press Shift A, search for a bump node, like so. And then plug our color into the height, and then plug the normal into the normal of our shader. So now we have our bump. Next we're going to do the color, so we'll just press Shift A, search for a noise texture like this. Take this vector into the noise texture, Control shift left click to preview. And then we're going to switch the scale on this guy to a 25 and the detail to an 8. Then we're going to press Shift A, search for a map range node to adjust the contrast here. Then on this guy, we're going to use some extra math nodes to play with these two values. So we're going to hit Shift A, search for a math node here. We're going to leave it on Add. Then I'm going to hit Shift D to duplicate it. Then I'm going to take both, all the values on these and change them to zeros like so. And then I'm going to go ahead and plug these guys into the from min and from max, and that's going to make this all black. Then on this top math node here, I'm going to make this value a 0 0.15, like this. Then this other value down here, I'm going to make a 0 0.35. And what this is going to do is it's going to play into where we want a little bit of lead marking on the, the paper to make it a little bit less uh, solid white. So I'm going to press Shift A and search for a value node like this, and then plug this into the values that still say 0. So if I increase this, we see that it increases the amount of lead that we have on there, and we can make it a negative one to take it all away. So then for the colors, we'll just press Shift A, search for a mix RGB like this, take the result of our map range into the factor, and then on color one, we're gonna switch that to the lead color, and I'll go ahead and give you a hex value for that as well. That's gonna be an 8E8E91. Again, that is an 8E8E91, just like that. Then to a paper color, is going to be an F9F BFF. Again, that is an F9F BFF, just like that. And we have our colors. So we just take this color and plug it into the base color here. And then we're going to take our roughness up to a 0.95, just like that. And 
voila, we have our finished material here. If we control shift left click to preview the shader, go to our camera view, and we can see the finished material here in the viewport. And as always, you can always play with the color if you want, or you can play with the amount of lead here, and you can play with the bump strength as well. But anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. You can use this printer paper in some of your renders. Obviously, it's a very niche material, but hopefully you find some use for it. And I'll see y'all guys in the next one.